Lord be with you. We are here today to celebrate. We've made it through another week. We are here to remember that we are loved, that we are worthy, no matter what may have happened, excuse me, no matter what may have happened to us during the week, we are here now and remembering that God is with us. I want to say a thank you for um, letting, um, uh, for some vacation time last weekend. Um, Josh and I had a wonderful time visiting uh, my parents, and, uh, and of course the Phoenix weather was a little bit nicer. It cooled down when we were there, so we only had the 70s. So I'm sorry if that, you know, makes any of you jealous, but uh, we had, had a wonderful time and um, we, yeah, mom and dad are doing well. And for those of you who have had a chance to meet them over the years, um, they always want to say hello to, to everyone that they know. They don't always remember who that is, but they remember people um, and faces. So um, it is great. But we're here today to gather and worship to remember that God has called us to be new creations, to be transformed in these waters of baptism, to come out of our cocoons and our chrysalises and to be and to emerge as the new creations that God has made. So let us worship the Lord today. Several announcements that we have um, going on just to remember our worship schedule. We're here this Sunday and next Sunday, and then on the third Sunday, we are back at First Presbyterian Church for the remainder of the month, so to, um, to make note of that. Last month, we did, um, or we have a congregational meeting today for the Presbyterian um, side right after worship. We need to elect new ruling elders for the coming year, so um, if you, anybody can stay, but only the Presbyterians can vote. Um, so um, right after the, the benediction, we'll just call that uh, meeting to order. And last month, we started our Bible journaling, and I think the seven or eight folks that, uh, that were there um, had a really fun time doing the Bible journaling, but there was also just a, a, an incredible time of just of being able to socialize and get to know each other. So you have another chance to come and do that. It's on May 16th. Um, and we're gonna try to do this on the third Thursdays of the month. So um, come and explore that. We are at the library at First Presbyterian Church. So um, bring a Bible if you, if you have one, particularly if it's got extra wide margins, but if not, we've got, we've got all the resources you need, but it's another, uh, just an, a, a neat way to socialize, but also to help reflect on scripture a little bit and, and help help your own mind get perhaps into a more spiritual center um, for um, focusing on some things. And then we have Pentecost coming up on the third Sunday. So May 19th is Pentecost Sunday, the traditional color of Pentecost to remind us of the coming of the Holy Spirit is red. So we like to see people dressed from head to toe in red. Um, that's not extra hard here in Wisconsin because, you know, we have so many, uh, um, you know, college teams and our local high school that likes to be covered in red. But, and then we always like to have the, the kids kind of vote on who's the best dressed in red or sometimes it, 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 it
Any other announcements today about our life and ministry together that we'd like to share? Oh, we still can. That's a good question. Please stand as you are able and join in our responsive gathering. Come, let us worship the Lord. Christ is risen. While our spiritual ancestors were living in Egypt, they wondered, How long must we endure this oppression? When they left Egypt and followed Moses in the desert, they wondered, Is there really any better life than our old life in Egypt? When we feel the urge to make a change in our lives, we wonder, how much longer can I go on like this? When we consider the cost of change, we wonder, what is the cost if I stay the same? Then the love of the divine reminds us, you too are my child. You can emerge to renewed life again and again. Let us worship the Lord. Let us sing to the Lord. be in a spirit of prayer let us pray holy one we come, come to you seeking the wisdom, the wisdom to, to discern, discern what to hold on to and what, and what to let, let go. go when, when we, we know what is no longer serving us we need courage and strength to make, to make a change help us to release the thought, the thought patterns, patterns and behaviors and that are keeping us from moving forward into healthier ways of being. Comfort us in our moments of loss and doubt. 
because we know that letting go can be painful. May we offer this comfort and grace to all who are ready for transformation. Amen. Amen. Friends, I invite you to take some time now. Welcome and greet those around you. For friends you've known for a long time, a good party of for friends that you're meeting for the first time, and welcome them with the love of Christ. Okay, today we have a opportunity for to learn about one of our shared missions here in Manitowoc from the crossing. Um, so now my mind is Kate, Jade. I'm sorry, my mind. So um, I like to welcome Jade to just talk to us a little bit about um, the crossing, and then on your way in, you may have noticed a bunch of baby bottles. We're not encouraging you to all go home and have babies. Um, but you'll find out a little bit more about what those are. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, like Pastor Matt said, I'm Jade Class. I am the Client Services Director at The Crossing. So I appreciate the invite to come share about what we do today. So at The Crossing, we provide pregnancy and parenting education, along with emotional, spiritual, and material support. We have our medical clinic, where we offer free pregnancy tests and free life-affirming ultrasounds. We aim to empower women to choose life while also respecting choice. We also have our Earn While You Learn program, 
that allows parents to earn points to use in our boutique and pantry through watching educational videos that provide practical parenting information. Our clients benefit greatly from the education and support that we provide. But without the community's generous donations, we would not be able to fully meet our clients' needs. To put this into perspective, in 2023, 96 car seats, 2,500 household products, and 11,000 clothing items were distributed to families. And the need continues to grow. So far this year, we have seen a 35% increase in the number of clients. Due to this increase, by the end of March, we had already used 50% of our yearly budget to supply our pantry. Our pantry offers items that are essential to everyday living that people are not able to get with WIC and food share, such as toilet paper, laundry detergent, personal hygiene products, diapers, and wipes. Providing these items for our families takes the pressure and stress off of parents. Instead of having to worry how they are going to afford a car seat or diapers, they can focus their energy on their children. The success of our, our Change a Life or the Baby Bottle campaign is crucial to the support, the ongoing needs of our families. We truly could not do the work that we do without your help. So we thank you for your ongoing support. Every donation, every hour spent volunteering, and every word spread about what we do is crucial to helping our clients. I pray that God blesses each and every one of you abundantly, and thank you for sharing your time with me. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Also, so, I'm sorry, I forgot to say, um, I'm gonna stick around after the service, so if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to come talk to me, because I'd love to share more. Wonderful. So on your way out, you can pick up um, a baby bottle and one for a neighbor or a friend if you want. Keep it on your table or your counter or your dresser in your room, wherever you might uh, empty change out of your pockets. People still use that occasionally. Um, but just as a reminder to make some donations and then we'll collect those on Father's Day. So, so they'll have those for a month, but you can bring those in at any time if you want to, to um, any time to the church office or um, or during worship, but it's just a, a, a way to help remember those needs that we have um, of folks all around. So again, thank you. So, Okay, if we have any young people um, in the room that want to join us up front, those of you who are watching online, now it's a special time to make sure your kids are focused in there, and uh, Brittany has some wonderful things to say. And I see we match a little bit today, Brittany. You've got, you've got your yellow Crocs on. I've got my yellow socks on. So I, I looked for uh, butterfly socks, but I didn't have any. The closest I have is bumblebees. Um, that came from the Muhammad Ali Center, where, you know, where, what's his famous saying? A dodge, what was it? Dodge like, oh, like, like a butterfly, butterfly sting, like, sting a like a bee. So, oh, you know, oh, so cool. that's <laughs> Where are we from? We found we found a deflated balloon. It's so exciting. Lisa, can you help me out with this, my friend? You're gonna need your hands. All right, Lisa, I'm gonna need your hands. Can you help me out. Okay, hands. We're gonna need hands. Oh, thank goodness. All right. Do you remember our rhyme? For tender hands that hold us, and we make a nest. And Lisa. Love that gives us wings. Can you come on? Yes. All right. So this is a pretty big day for Chris. Pastor, could you grab your could you grab your blankie? It's a pretty big day. Chris has been a lot of things this past couple weeks. She's been a puppet show screen. She's been a superhero cape. Okay, she's been a blanket fort. We have talked about her being a stage. And today, she's going to be, I need a drum roll. Can you guys be a drum roll? It's a big day, drum roll. Oh, thank you. Butterfly wings. Pastor, can you make butterfly wings? Oh, that's perfect. Perfect, yes! 
Pastor has become a butterfly. I feel like that. <laughs> Do you want to give it a try? Perfect. Oh, that's exactly like what it's meant to be. That's perfect. God wanted us to be like the caterpillar. And he wanted us to grow and change and emerge. And when he, we came out, we talked about turning into goo and doing our hard things and waiting. And what do we do? When we come out of our chrysalis, what do we do when we come out of our cocoon? We come, we turn into a butterfly and then we fly. And it needed all of that time in its chrysalis to do that. And now it's time to fly. So during its chrysalis time, we've talked about little words that we've whispered into our chrysalis all this time. Our very first one was Trust. So we whispered trust. So okay. here's our branch, right? Yep, our branch and our chrysalis. It's okay if you want to move it a little. Okay. Trust. Say trust. Really loud. Perfect. And we learned that trust can lead us to leave our really comfy spaces and act with faith. And we learned what can happen when we're open to embracing the beauty of darkness and that wonder of light. Remember that light. Light, perfect. And we explore what can happen when we awaken to the amazing power that God has put in every single one of us. We said, awaken. And then we discovered how our loving God can see possibilities in all of us. That was our big word last week, possibilities. We can do so many cool things. And we've discovered that when we leave behind all of our worries that we don't need, that we can move forward with purpose. So with even more strength, we're not gonna whisper anymore. We're gonna say, forward! So today we're going to emerge from our chrysalis and we're going to take to the sky and we're going to fly. So as loud as you can, can you shout fly? You were the loudest. That made my ears pop. It's time for us to fly. Okay, so you're gonna go to your classroom now, and you can do some stuff, or you can stay here if you want. Okay. I'm gonna find the first line. Okay, go fly out. Show us how you can fly out. Just bring it back when you're done. Okay. As we prepare to seek God in the word, let us pray together. O risen Christ, open us to the power of your resurrection as we hear it proclaimed anew this day, that we too might rise to new life in you. Amen. Our scripture comes to us from Genesis 12, one through nine. Today we remember that emerging from cocoons or chrysalises means that we leave something behind. Let us listen to the spirit as we hear it in the Genesis passage. The Lord said to Abram, 
Leave your land, your family, and your father's household for the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Those who curse you, I will curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. Abram left just as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram let, took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all of their possessions, and those who came, who became members of their household in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as the sacred place at Shechem, at the Oak of Morah. The Canaanites lived in the land at that time. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, I give this land to your descendants. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord, who appeared to him. From there he traveled toward the mountains east of Bethel, and pitched his tent with Bethel in, on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and worshiped in the Lord's name. Then Abram set out toward the arid southern plain and making and breaking camp as he went. Our story of love, Christ has risen. Have any of you ever left anything behind? I can remember once my parents left me behind. Um, now I think that uh, I maybe deserve that a little bit, but it didn't last too long. They remembered me at some point. But this is Leo. Leo, when I was a kid, was um, this stuffed pillow that uh, mom had made for me, and it was just something that I loved to have around me all the time. Well, one time we were visiting my grandparents in Los Angeles and I had Leo with me and I would sleep with it and just loved having that around, kind of followed me around, or, you know, or I made it follow me around wherever we went. And then that morning when it came time for us to head back to Phoenix, you know, we packed up the car and everything and we said our goodbyes and it wasn't long before I realized that Leo was not in the car with me. Now, some of you can remember back those days before cell phones. Some of you may have experienced life in Los Angeles and you don't just turn around in Los Angeles to go back to pick up something. So my parents, you know, did whatever the loving and kind way to say, suck it up, buttercup. And eventually I fell asleep, I'm sure, with some tears. But I remember when I got home, immediately you had to call Grandma and Granddad. They did, they looked all over, they could not find Leo. Leo wasn't in the car, Leo wasn't in their house. So they looked outside, you know, maybe he fell on the lawn, maybe in the driveway, couldn't find it cried myself to sleep that night and probably for several nights to come. It just wasn't right not having Leo there. Leo was gone and all I knew is I needed Leo. Time went by. It was a mystery. It was a mystery on what happened to Leo. And then one day, one day, the phone rang in our house. You remember those days, one phone in the kitchen and everybody ran to it? It was granddad. They had found Leo. Somehow, the bunk beds that I had stayed in, somehow Leo had become stuck between the headboard and the wall. And until they actually moved the entire bed out, 
They never knew that Leo was there. And so they promptly packaged up Leo and sent him over to us. But you know, something was kind of different though. They told me that and I was kind of like, oh, okay. And then when Leo came in the box and they opened up the box, my parents gave it to him and I remember I just kind of shrugged it off. Like, oh, okay. Now, parents, all of you who are parents know that, that, that parent eye roll, like when your kids have been begging for something, have been crying for something, have been absolutely bereft over these things. And then suddenly when they get it, it doesn't seem to be a big deal. My parents didn't quite understand, but all I knew was I had outgrown Leo. In those five or six months that passed during that time, I had decided I didn't need Leo anymore. I was a big boy. And again, to the dismay of my parents who just kind of shook their head, but I was perfectly fine of leaving Leo behind and never look back. I don't know, I should have looked when I was at their house if he was still stuffed up in the closet um, or something in my old bedroom because I have a feeling they, because again, parents like to save those things. I'm now on that side of saving things that I all think my kids will someday want um, and just let me continue to live in that fantasy for those of you who may have passed through that stage already. But... I don't know, let's kind of reach that moment where sometimes you can leave things behind and it can be scary and it can be sad for a little bit, but then one day you just kind of wake up and you don't need it anymore. So I want you to think for a moment, maybe even share with your neighbor for a moment. What's something that you kind of left behind and then kind of grew out of or realized that maybe it wasn't as important as you thought? I want to think for a moment and then just share it with uh, some people that might be around you. Something that was so important and then kind of just outgrew it. So, Chuck, you're raising your hand. You have something? Fear. Fear? Okay, well, that, that you went right down there. That's a, that's a, <laughs> Um, we'll line up after church to find out how you uh, were able to move beyond fear. That's, that's an important thing. Thank you for sharing. I know that's probably one that a lot of us struggle with. So, Anybody else have something they want to share? Maybe it was a stuffed animal. Maybe it was a pet. Maybe it was a childhood home. Something that you kind of grew beyond. It can be scary, right? It can be scary to leave things behind, to suddenly realize that everything that we become accustomed to is perhaps different. Maybe leaving home for the first time, whether that's getting your own apartment or whether that's going away to college or going into the military or something, you're leaving all this behind and you're starting a new life. It can be filled with wonder and joy, but it can also be a little scary. I think that's why we tear up at graduations. It's, you know, we should be happy, right? But we know that having that child in our house is changing now. Maybe at that time of a wedding where it's so happy, but we can't help but cry a little bit. People are leaving and people are changing. And it's scary. Even if it's a good change, even if it's a good thing for us, it can still be scary. In our story today, Abram and Sarai had that moment. I mean, God literally says, leave your land, your family, and your parents' household. Leave behind the life that you once knew. All those comforts, all the joys, leave it all behind and just go. 
must have been hard for them. Tears, frustration, resistance, kind of that no way, God, I'm not doing that. Maybe trying to figure out how much stuff could they pack with them and take all the comforts of home with them? Was it possible? Could they do it? They were being asked to leave behind everything that had given them purpose, everything that had given them meaning. Imagine the fear. Imagine the fear they must have felt. Sure, we can read that God kind of told them they would be blessed. But when somebody says that to you, does that really make it any easier at that moment? Does it really make it any less scarier when your parents said, that's okay, don't worry, you'll figure it out. Sometimes we don't want to figure it out. We just want things to stay the same. But life changes. I can see Abram and Sarai must have been questioning things like, okay, God, where exactly are you asking us to go? Will there be other people there, God? Will they speak our language? Will they have the same customs as we do? Come on, God, you've got to let us in. This is scary. This is hard. This is traumatic to just leave everything and go. In our metaphor of butterflies, and I listened to Pastor Ryan last week, and I understand he corrected the difference between a cocoon and a chrysalis. Cocoon's easier for me to say, and it rhymes with some other words, so I've been sticking to it, but when we come out of those chrysalis, the cocoons, and our wings begin to dry off and then they're there, they're open. We're supposed to fly, to do something that we've never done before. That butterfly, before that moment, all that it knew was eating through crunchy leaves, crawling on stems and up bark. It didn't know anything about flying. It didn't have any pilot's license. It didn't have any of that. No mom or dad sitting there telling them, this is what you got to do. Suddenly they just come out. God said, come out. They came out and now they're sitting there. They must be scared to death in those butterfly brains. What am I supposed to do? If we dive into the biology even, that poor butterfly doesn't even know how to eat right. When it's a caterpillar, it crunches on leaves and has a little mouth and it crunches away on those things. You remember the Hungry Caterpillar book. But here as a butterfly, it's now got this long tube on its kind of its nose, this proboscis, and it's supposed to go and suck up nectar. It doesn't even know how to eat right. For me, not knowing how to eat would be scary in itself. But there it goes. It's ready, and now it must do something. It can't cling to that branch forever. It has to take flight. It has to let go of what was once familiar, and it emerges now into something that is new. And everything is new and scary and awesome. I don't know for sure, but I imagine that a butterfly at some point kind of stops and maybe looks in the reflection of a window and sees itself and remembers what it was like to be a caterpillar maybe even longing for those days when it creeped along the branches and munched on those crunchy leaves. Abram and Sarai, when they left their home, must have had those moments when they looked back, maybe literally turning and looking back, 
Certainly in the memory around the campfire, telling the stories, oh, remember when? Talking about their time, their childhood, their parents, their grandparents. Remember when? And then maybe suddenly getting real silent. Realizing that they're just memories now. Maybe they would prod each other along and maybe they would say, Do you, can you remember? I'm not quite sure. What did it look like? Was a tree there or was it over there? And their memories over time begin to fade. But in the story, in the text we read, it tells us more than once that they built these worship spaces, these holy spaces spaces. I think they did that exactly because they needed help remembering. It wasn't just for them to say, thank you, God. It was to say, thank you, God, for being with me now because I'm scared to death. I'm going to make this solid worship space. I'm going to stack the rocks on top of one another because I need to remember. I need something to hold on to because you've had us leave everything behind and we're just out here and the wind whisks and the sand blows and we're not quite sure of these people in this land. Are they nice? Are they friendly? We're not even sure if they like the same foods and the spices and what are we going to do? And so they build these worship spaces, not once, not twice, but wherever they stopped, they built an altar to the Lord as a way to remember, a way to look back even as they moved forward. The past is important. Abram and Sarai knew that. But they also realized that they cannot live in the past. They couldn't ignore the future. That butterfly can't stay in that cocoon. It will die. That butterfly can't just emerge and just stay on that branch. It will die at some point. It needs to become something more than it was. It needs to move forward. Sometimes when life gets rough, I imagine that I just want to be able to crawl up into my mom's lap again like I did when I was a little child. For a lot of reasons, that can't really happen anymore. And now, as I visited with mom last week, I realized that I remember more of my childhood than she does now. It's hard. She's having a hard time remembering what being a mom was like for her. Alzheimer's can do that to you. But yet somehow she gets up every day. She may not know quite what day of the week it is. She may not quite remember if she took her medication or if she's had breakfast already, but somehow she's there and it's a new day. And she smiles. And she tries to do the best, and as far as she's concerned, it is the best. We have to move forward. The past is important, but the future is where we have to go. Dare I say that here in the life of the church, our wistful rememberings of the bygone days of the congregations that make up Manitowoc Cooperative Ministry. We can remember when this church was on Hancock Street. Some of you literally here remember that time. We can remember those days at St. John's. We can remember those 150 plus years in the building at First Presbyterian. We can remember those with kind of this wishful thinking, kind of like Abraham 
and Sarai, and we can remember the good old times. We can remember when we had to set up chairs in the aisle. We can remember when we had to add additions on because there wasn't enough room for kids. We can remember holding classes in church offices and even kitchens. We can remember when choirs filled the room can remember all those and those are good things and those are good memories and they are wonderful for us to have and to celebrate but that is not where we can ever go back again we can't go back we've got to move forward no matter how scary it is to stand on that branch and open our wings we've got to fly We've got to be what God created us to be. We have to be more than what we once were. I know it's scary. It's scary to take a leap and to trust that God is there. It's scary for new customs and new ways. But it's not all that new. If any of you grew up in any of these three churches and you've been doing that for more than, say, 40 years, 50 years, some of you didn't even grow up in our current denominations. The UCC is only, what, 53 years old, I think? The Presbyterian Church USA was only formally birthed in the 1980s. Yeah, we had all these predecessors, but somehow we came together and now we're new things. We're new things, they may look kind of the same, but they're not. They may feel a little bit comfortable, but they took some getting used to. And now for over five years, we've been working together as a united ministry. And it's felt different. And sometimes we haven't really liked it. Other times we've realized that things could flourish in ways we didn't know before. But God said, take flight. Don't worry. It can be scary to envision a new way of being church. But God has transformed us with wings to fly in new ways. It can be scary to worship in a different building. And we still have folks who cling to a Presbyterian branch or a Peace UCC branch. And that they're afraid to fly over to another branch when we're worshiping in another space. But you know, God has given us wings. We've been transformed. We can do this, folks. It can be scary for us to be generous in the midst of a culture that teaches us to hoard everything and to put ourselves in the center of life. But God has transformed us and given us wings to fly in new ways. It can be scary to embrace people who are different from us in culture, in customs, in color, in love. But God has transformed us with wings and invited us to fly in new ways. It can be scary. It can be scary to admit that once the, the individuals and the churches that we once were are not what we must be today and tomorrow. But God has transformed us. God has given us wings. We can leave behind these things, and even when they are so powerfully important to us, because our best days are not in the past. Our best days are in the future. God is still working. God is still talking. God is still transforming. Our future is where God needs us to be. Amen. Just this past week, just this past week, our siblings in the United Methodist Church unfolded their wings and recognized that God calls and blesses all people, even those who identify as LGBTQIA folk. 
Just like us cisgendered straight folk, God has called them to fly and that they too belong in the church. So praise God that our United Methodist siblings can now fly with the United Church of Christ and with the Presbyterian Church USA and the Episcopal Church in America and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and so many other churches that have said, come out and that we've heard the call of God and we've moved in and we've moved out and we said we will fly even in the midst of fear. Even when we don't know quite what's going on. This is a God thing and we will do it because God has called us. God has transformed us. In the waters of baptism, you and I became new creations. I look out in your faces and I want you to know that your past will not control you. Your past does not define you because you have wings now. So maybe your past was as suffering from addiction. Maybe your past was filled with grief. Maybe your past was filled with all sorts of dark secrets that nobody ought to know. No, today, brothers and sisters, no, today, siblings, we have been made new creations. We're no longer trapped in that fearful cocoon or that chrysalis, no longer trapped in the darkness. Christ has called us out. We have been given wings. Our past cannot define us. Our past cannot control us. It is only by the grace of God that we move and flourish. And this is what we are called to do. This is why we can celebrate today. This is why we can see tomorrow and not be as afraid. Yeah, the past is powerful. It shaped us and it made us and we should never lose the, lose the ability to remember. But when we keep living in it, we become a museum and we might as well lock the doors on our lives and hire a security guard and a custodian to dust us off now and then. But instead, the church is not called to be a museum. The church is called to be a new creation, to be a witness in the world to make a difference in the world. The doors of the cocoon have been open. And we as individuals and as a church are new creations. So know today, beloved congregation, that God is calling you, that God has shaped you God has transformed you, and that is our future. Let the people say amen. amen. If you are able to, please stand and let us sing, Take My Life, God, Let It Be.
please be seated. Friends, God has called us, has called us to spread our wings and to move in new directions, but God has also said you are not alone in that endeavor. God has provided this feast for us, a feast of remembrance, a feast of hope, a feast of justice, a feast of transformation. We are called to come to this table, even if we're frightened, even if we doubt, even if we are not sure exactly what's happening. That's called the mystery of faith. And God calls us. As we prepare to dine at this table, we are also invited to come and to share our gifts a sacred potluck, if you will, where we share our gifts so that God's presence can be known through the work that we do in our ministry. So we can continue to feed the hungry. We can continue to house those in homelessness, where we can provide shelter from those who are spiritually searching for those who have gone through the depths of pain and sorrow that we, together, our gifts brought to the table of the Lord, allow us to do so much. So this morning, as you prepare to come to take the gifts to the table, also come to prepare your offerings and when you come up, you can place them in the offering plate that's here. Every gift is unique. Every gift is important. Every prayer and every life helps to build the beloved community of God where love and justice are always present. So friends, hear the invitation that people will come from east and from west from north and from south, and they shall gather at the table of the Lord. They shall break bread, and they will emerge and unfurl their wings, and they will become what God has created us to be. This table has not been prepared by me. It has not been prepared by this congregation. It is Christ's table. And all who hunger and thirst for righteousness are welcome to come to this table, to break bread, to share the cup, and to participate in God's great and mysterious work in the world. As we prepare to receive and to share our gifts, let us come together in prayer. Do any of you have any special prayers today that you would like us to lift up? Steve. Okay, so Mary, yes, pray, pray for Mary as she travels through these final stages in life. Other prayers we wish to name today? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry? Prayers for Julia. Yes, Julia, um, Julia who um, I spoke with her earlier this week, and um, she hopes to be back in church soon. So, in the back here? Your grandma? Your grandma's dog. So they're, they're family too. So we certainly will lift that up for prayers. Yes, Carl. Yes, the, the kids and the family at the, at the Mount Horeb school where the shooting took place this week. Um, it's close to our own back door. And um, we continue to pray that it never happens anywhere again. Um, and we say that every time there's a shooting and it keeps happening. So maybe part of the cocoons God calls us out of is ones that will have the courage and the strength to do what must be done so that safety and peace will be there. Other prayers that we wish to name today? So, Bill, you finished your last treatment, right? Okay. So, all right. And, um, and so then... I, in a couple months, we're going to hear nothing. That you go back, and they're not. They're going to say it all looks good, and then you're going to go back for six months, and they're going to say the same thing. 
And, it, and then eventually you're gonna reach that mark and they're gonna use that big R word and that it's complete remission and we won't worry about it anymore. So that's our prayer for you. Friends, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Holy and gracious God, thank you. Thank you for creating all that is seen and unseen. Thank you for creating all the things that creep and swim and fly upon the earth. Thank you, Lord, for breathing into a hunk of clay and creating us. Thank you, Lord, that when we faltered, when we left, when we cursed, when we turned our back, you continued to say, I forgive you. I am your God and you are my people. Thank you, Lord, when we were so lost that you brought Jesus into this world, that you took flesh upon your very spirit, and you showed us what it means to love. You showed us what it means to have courage. You showed us what it means to be workers of peace and of justice. And Lord, even though we know those truths, it is still so easy for us to cling to the branches of the past. It is still so easy for us to live in a time that once was, and not in the time that is. And so come, Lord Jesus, and speak to us again, so we may move forward, that we may fly and do things that we never imagined we could do, Lord, you have heard the prayers that have been named here, prayers for healing, prayers for hope, prayers for strength. Bring your healing and your hope to all of these places, all these people, all these circumstances. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for the peace of the world. We pray that you will give each and every one of us the wisdom to follow you. We pray for those who no one remembers, for the nameless that walk our streets, that sleep under bushes, that seek their dinner in dumpsters. We pray for those in addiction, we pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those where everything seems to be going right. We pray for those who are celebrating. We pray, O oh Lord, for all of your creation. Give us the ears and the eyes and the hearts to serve as you have served. And now, O oh Lord, as we prepare to feast on the gifts that you have given us, we remember your prayer, our family prayer that you invited us to lift up together. And so we pray our family prayer using whatever translation or version speaks from our hearts to you. And the people pray, our Father, Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he was in that upper room with his disciples and he took a loaf of bread, he gave thanks to God and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. In the same manner after the supper, our Lord took a cup and again, he gave thanks to God and he poured into it and he said, this is the blood of the covenant poured out for you today. Drink from this cup 
eat from this loaf. Our sins shall be forgiven. New life shall be ours. Friends, these are God's gifts to all of creation. And you're able to help as a server today. Are there others who would are able to come forward? I need two other servers that can join us today. If you please come forward, Spirit. You're invited to come and to tear a piece, or to take a piece of the bread and to dip it in the cup and to remember that you are loved that you have been blessed. You're invited to come and to bring your offerings, to place them here in the plate, not as a sign of payment for anything, but as a sign of generosity, because God has given us the wings to fly and to be the workers of justice in the world. As Julie begins to play, you're invited to come forth.
thank you, Lord, for these precious gifts that you have shared with us. We dedicate our lives and these offerings to you. May you course through us. May we embrace the transformations you have made in our lives and let us be the new creation that we are. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us join in singing Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. You are able. Let us now receive God's blessing for us today. I invite you to put one hand out with your palm facing upward as a sign that we are all receivers of God's blessings in the world. With your other hand, I invite you to put it facing outward as a reminder that we are also givers of God's blessing in this world. And now hear these words. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Go now in justice, for you have been given the new wings of creation. May the Holy Spirit comfort us, protect us, and guide us. Let us go with the blessings of Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Alleluia. Amen. I remind you that after the benediction, um, Presbyterian side, we need to stay for a brief meeting to elect officers, um, and the rest you can just continue to visit and, and to chat, but let us go out singing, may the God of hope go with us. <laughs>